After the defeat of the Red Army near Kharkov in March 1943, and before the beginning of the Spring Thaw, there was a pause in the fighting on the Soviet-German front that allowed the opposing forces to replenish their battle casualties and strategize for the summer campaigns. A salient formed in the winter offensive near Kursk, which would later be known as the Kursk Salient, gave the Soviet command the opportunity to launch powerful strikes on the flanks of the German forces near Belograd and Kharkov. Despite the overall superiority in manpower and firepower, on March 12, 1943, Supreme Command Headquarters devised a deliberate large-scale defensive strategy for the section of the front line. On the same day, Adolf Hitler approved the plan for Operation Citadel. Operation Citadel was postponed several times, and together with successful operations carried out by Soviet intelligence, the element of surprise was lost and the Germans' intentions were revealed. Supreme Command Headquarters took the advantage of a three-month pause in the fighting and built deep defenses capable of withstanding a massive armored thrust. By repelling enemy pressure and wearing them down in defensive encounters, the plan was for the main forces of Varinsk and Central Fronts to launch a counter-offensive and defeat the opposing forces, thereby creating conditions for a large-scale offensive. The Varinsk Front under command of Army General Nikolai Vatunin defended the 244-kilometer long southern part of the Kursk salient. The first wave included the 38th and 40th Armies, as well as the 6th and 7th Guards Armies, which had three defensive lines with a total depth of 30 to 50 kilometers. The second wave consisted of the 1st Tank Army and the 69th Army, and one rifle and two separate tank corps in reserve. The addition of these forces of the Steppe Military District were deployed in the rear areas of the front. On the evening of July 4th, VF Command received information about intense enemy activity along this line of the 6th Guards Army, and intelligence information that the battle would begin at dawn on July 5th. Orders were issued to begin the planned large-scale counter-artillery fire. This took place in two stages, and only inflicted minor losses on the German forces. The German artillery opened fire at 3.30 a.m. At 4 a.m., the formations of Army Group South launched the decisive attack. Waiting was absolutely exhausting. After a long night's march, our 20th Guards Tank Brigade took up defensive positions in Terranivo, waiting for the enemy to attack in the morning. However, the German soldiers were clearly not in a hurry, and only launched their offensive at about midday, and somewhat away from our positions. The main forces of the Corps had been fighting for a long time, and judging by the abrupt and panicky radio messages, their situation was extremely difficult. We continued to wait, while our comrades were fighting and dying somewhere else. The order to advance was only received from the Corps commander at about 1700 hours. I arrived at the brigade in late 1942 as a junior lieutenant, when it was still being restructured in the Tambov tank camps. If it hadn't been for my experienced crew, who already had experienced the smell of powder at Stalingrad, I surely would have been killed in the subsequent events. Near Varinch in January 1943, the brigade lost almost all of its equipment in just seven days, and the commanders of both the tank and the motorized rifle battalions were killed. In February, our forces were replenished once again, but after an unsuccessful battle near Kharkov in late March, the brigade was finally taken out for restructuring in early summer. I was given command of a platoon, and now I had to lead men into battle. After breaching the defenses of the 51st GRD, the enemy strikes in the direction of the Kalinikator Beliniko station. The order was given to advance the 45th and 250th tank battalions to the forest north leaving one tank company in Chernivo, thereby preventing the enemy from spreading in the direction of Belenico. Hello everybody, Wolfpack here, and welcome to a brand new series on the channel which will be showcasing IL-2 Tank Crew. We will be going through the Breaking Point campaign, which puts you in command of a T-3476, which we are currently in. Let's go ahead and start our tank up. The campaign takes place during the Battle of Kursk, and our objective for today is to defend the town of Kalin here. 
There is a German advance heading this way, and we have been dispatched to halt that at all costs. As you can see in IL-2 tank crew, the entire tank interior is fully modeled and modeled quite nicely, if I do say so myself. You can open the hatches as well, and you can be in multiple different positions. As a matter of fact, let's go to the commander position and open the hatch and get this tank on the move. We are in the middle of a fairly large convoy. There's quite a few tanks ahead of us and a whole boatload behind us. Apparently there are tanks spotted, but we are not to open fire. We are going to continue and move towards our primary objective. You can see there's been a battle here previously. Lots of debris in the area and lots of fire. Currently, oh, let's go ahead and really pour on the coals here. Currently making 32 kilometers per hour on the road. There's three aircraft spotted coming up or up above us. Hopefully they are friendly and aren't about to uh, blow us a smithereens. That would be quite a quick end to this mission, wouldn't it? We'll keep on moving. Those look like HE-111s. Oh, they certainly are. Well, hopefully they don't bomb the front of our column. That would be disastrous. And yeah, they're flying right overhead. All right, let's slow down, although we're catching up to the rest of our formation. The town should be just up ahead. Yep, there's our town. That's where we need to defend. And those HE-111s are turning. Oh, yikes. It looks like they just blew the town to smithereens. Alt. Looks like we will continue our advance towards the town, and we will be fighting in the inferno. So that is one of the really awesome aspects of IL-2 tank crew, is the combined arms. Uh, you have aircraft flying around and then tanks on the ground. There's actually multiplayer servers out there as well which utilize this, which are quite a lot of fun, but I do want to check out the single player campaigns, and I figured I would uh, showcase it on the channel here. There is a German campaign as well, which I do plan to do. All right, we're to continue moving forward towards the town. Wilco. Looks like there's some explosions probably hanging out here. The commander view is a pretty bad idea. So let's go ahead and shut the hatch, go to the driver position, and we will operate from here. Obviously, whenever you're buttoned up like this, visibility is extremely low. All right, tanks take position at the southern outskirts of Kalinin. Kalin, and wait for orders. I am going to butcher a lot of Russian towns' names in this <laughs> series, so do be prepared. All right, continue to advance. I'm really just going to follow this guy right in front of me in the convoy. I think. I I could try to find a better position in the town, but I really can't make anything else out from down here. Looks like some of the tanks are breaking off to the right. I could kind of hide in the forest and take up position there. That might be a good idea, to be honest. Hmm. Looks like or I could just take up in the center. Yeah, let's do that. Let's take up in the center. I am commanding, I believe, two other tanks. I can give them orders through the command menu, which I will do. Looks like there's actually a... Oh, was that a bomb? Oh, that was a bomb. That's exactly where I was planning to move to. Okay, apparently preparing to begin an attack. I can't see very much, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I'll just rely on our commander for orders. Yeah, I'm going to take position up here. Yeah, this looks like actually a pretty good spot. We have some cover. Here's this burning T-34.
All right, let's turn the tank around. Let's reverse. Another bomb just dropped. Formation control. Spread out, F4. All right, we can take control of the gun, but let's open the hatch and take a look and see what's going on out here. Uh, there's a BF-110 coming straight at us. It's dropped a bomb. Oh, hold tight, boys. Ooh, that hit us. You okay? That was pretty damn close, wasn't it? One tenth's peeling off. No visual on any enemies just yet. Oh, tracer fire. Okay. Let's take control of the gun. And let's scan for any enemies here. I think this is a fairly good position. The rest of the convoy is slowly advancing and catching up. It's like that tank is having issues. Maybe the driver was knocked out. Okay, enemy tank on the horizon. Just coming over the crest of that hill there. It looks like a Panzer IV. My tank identification skills are not great, just a heads up. So I will probably misidentify a few things here and there. Scanning this forest, I do anticipate that's where they'll come from. It's like it just fired. Let's, let's range our gun here. I'm guessing there are about 100 and yeah, 1.2 kilometers out. Let's wait, tank is moving. Stop fire. Oh wow, that was way short. They're much farther away. All right, try again. Still short, increase range by 100 meters. Oh, there are more German tanks breaking through the forest line there. Oh, and that tank was just hit, that's no good. Yeah, I'm opening fire at an extreme range, but we have plenty of plenty of ammo. I'm not too worried about expending it here. Hit! We have some wind, which is why I'm off-centering. There we go. There was a hit right there as well. That tank has been disabled. Let's train over to this other Panzer IV. It's moving quite quickly. Yep, we're going to have to lead a bit more. I wish I could... Everyone else is still holding fire, which is understandable. This is quite the range, and I'm really just wasting ammo. There we go. They're training their guns. He's in range. Fire. Oh, there we go. He got hit there. Let's keep up the pressure. It's quite a few tanks barreling. There's even more. Wow, I'm just seeing a lot more by that forest. Not too excited to see what's in store for us here. Let's decrease range slightly. And keep on firing. All right, that tank is kind of concealed by the hill, unfortunately. Once he peeks it, I'll, I'll open fire once again. We actually have a coaxial machine gun as well, which you can see the, the wind blowing those rounds. Yeah, there's quite a few tanks. They're still quite far away. Maybe I can aim for this cluster. That Panzer IV is shooting at us. Let's try to try to hit it again. I think he's much closer than before. Oh no! Someone's bailing out. Hit. There we go. Continue to fire. Another hit. Oh my gosh. This is chaos now. 
I'm not feeling as confident about our position. We've hit this Panzer quite a bit. There we go. Panzer's been eliminated. We have another one peeking this hill. Let's fire. Yeah. Whoa. Try to range it. Oh my gosh, that T-34 got a one hit, one kill there. Wow, we are actually making quick work of them. They're doing this frontal attack. Can't say it's working too well for them. That's another one down. Italian forward for the motherland. All right, let's go. Uh, movement control. Oh boy, movement. Oh boy, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. Fire control? All right. All right, let's go, boys. For the motherland. All right, let's stop. Get our gun on a target. Like that panzer there. Fire. And move. Looks like it went far. Let's decrease range. Halt. I don't even know how many other tanks are still operational. Who's around? There's still a lot of German tanks out there. Continue to fire. Just short. All right, there's a T-34 advancing off to the left there. Let's keep moving. Must follow our orders. It's like all the German tanks to the right of me have been disabled. It's really just these guys right in front. And the T-34 has quite a bit of armor in the front, so I'm not too, too worried about doing this. All right, stop. Let's take aim. Fire. Uh, not effective. Keep moving. All right, armor piercing is up. Halt. Yeah, 900 meters. Let's, let's decrease range slightly. 900 meters. Here we have a tank. Just short, let's move. All right, armor piercing up, halt. All disengage. Retreat to Belenko. Belenko? All right, let's keep firing then. Let's reverse. I do not want to <laughs> turn around and show them my rear armor. Be disastrous. It's like that German tank is smoking. Target destroyed. Our call sign is Wolf, which is very confusing. We're going to continue to back up slowly. Let's halt. The tank just cooked off before I hit it. Getting shot at from something. Let's increase range. Yeah, a lot of these tanks have been knocked out. Hit. That thing's done for. Another one right here. Bounce off his armor. Uh, let's continue to back up. It's like... Alright, let's get off the gun. And set a driver position. I don't know where e the rest of my... Where everyone else is going. Okay, we're gonna follow this tank. Moving one o'clock, range 1,000 meters. I just need to link up with a friendly tank so I know where to go. We'll follow him to our rendezvous point. Let's get the hell out of here. That was quite a good defense. Okay, there's another tank. All right. All right, let's 
book it out of Dodge. I just realized I wasn't recording that whole thing. That's really unfortunate. And there's our objective. Let's take a look at our tank. We actually miraculously have not been hit yet, which is really good. No damage just yet. But look at how many T-34s are knocked out there. Let's go to the commander's seat and take a look. Yeah, we're getting out of here. You can actually control the tank and your platoon by just being the commander and you can just send orders and the tank your ai crew in here will automatically fire and move and aim the tank and you just give orders through this command menu uh, i do want to try that out a bit later uh in the series and see how that works i am fairly new to tank crew so this is going to be a learning career curve for me uh, but i think that makes it even more exciting <laughs> to be honest because all of this is brand new for me really I've messed around in Tank Crew a little bit. I've done a few other videos on it, um, but I have not done anything like this. And this has been a very uh, cool and immersive experience. Just th that beginning with those HE-111s bombing the town was pretty nuts. Okay, looks like we're getting on this road. Continue to really vacate the area. Hopefully we don't encounter anything too scary up ahead. I'm pretty sure my platoon has been completely wiped out. Oh, mission is complete. That has been the mission. All right. So our tank was still in service. We destroyed four armored vehicles during that engagement. So not too bad, four medium armored vehicles. I hope you all enjoyed this first video of the Breaking Point campaign in IL-2 tank crew. If you did, please be sure to leave a like, especially on the first episode of the new series. It really does help the video get out there and get some exposure. But until next time, that's all I have. Thank you all for watching. This is Wolfpack345 signing off, and I'll see you on the next one.